Climate activist Greta Thunberg has returned to protest. Time magazine person of the year, the youngest in their history. Overwhelming support for uh, Greta Thunberg. At 16 years of age, she has become the face of the climate change fight. She's hijacking the news cycle through hashtags, viral moments. Taking on climate change head on, pulling no punches. Her passionate speeches have drawn attention all over the world. People are concerned that the premise of your school strike was never actually the innocent thing that it was. Did Reinshog accidentally run into you, or was it orchestrated by your parents well beforehand? I'm allowed to do this. Where are we? Hong Kong? China? No, this is Sweden. So we have ID. Been. Why are people who are critical of Greta not allowed to be anywhere near the action? Hey, what are you doing? Stop don't touch me. You don't want to tell the world who's paying you? Nobody has bothered to dig deep into the rise of her messiahood until now. If someone starts to pull that one thread, then it will all come collapsing down. Who do you think you are? I'm asking questions. Yes. I want to ask Greta some questions. Yes. Yeah. Don't touch me. What are you doing? Can you apologize for hitting me? Hitting you? Yes. Uh, bullshit. You punched me in the gut three times. Your hands on me wasn't a part of this. You didn't need to be a part of this. You could have left me alone. It turned out fine, didn't it? You could have left me alone. You didn't. And it's going to blow back on you. How does a 15-year-old girl bewitch the world? She doesn't, at least not alone. Greta Thunberg's rise to fame over the course of several months is not nearly as innocuous as it might appear from the outside. Rather, Greta's rise was facilitated by elites from around the world. The campaign to canonize Greta as a saint in the eyes of the world's leftist Zoomers and Boomers alike was coordinated, it was orchestrated and executed nearly flawlessly. Nobody has bothered to dig deep into the rise of her messiahood until now. I've just landed in Stockholm, Sweden to do just that, to expose the lies that Greta's handlers have built her movement on. Chinks in Greta's armor only began to appear after she had bewitched the world, not before. Greta's sadistic side was exposed when she told her raging supporters that the movement needed to put their opponents against a wall. World leaders are still trying to run away from their responsibilities, but we have to make sure that they cannot do that. We will make sure they, that we put them against the wall. Many started to compare her to a modern day Mao, firing squads and all. But that's not her only Maoist trait. This has been unreported so far, but Rebel News has learned that while Greta was on her intercontinental field trip, Greta had elite, low-profile security that would train kids to act as hidden security to maintain her innocent image. Just like Mao's red guard, Greta had a green guard. It's not just the authoritarian side of Greta that nobody sees, it's the hypocritic side as well. Remember Greta's Tesla filled to the windows with plastic utensils, grocery bags, water bottles, and imported goods? Well, Greta doesn't want you to see that. She doesn't want you to ask any other questions about her questionable rise to fame. Unfortunately for her and for the people behind her, that is exactly why I came to Sweden. To ask questions that the mainstream media won't. Specifically, I want to ask Greta about the school she's allegedly striking from. The world is under the impression that Greta was a regular student who walked out of class on a Friday. What we have learned is that Greta's education regime isn't really what most people assume it is. Greta, whose childhood has been characterized by severe eating, speaking, and socializing disorders, was actually sent to a school for kids with special needs. This school, Kuringla Skula it's called here, doesn't actually have attendance requirements like a regular school does. When the pupils are not feeling well, or are sick, or are having an episode, well, they're not required to come to class at all. Rather, the parents can keep them at home or take them on an excursion as long as they bring their textbooks. If that is the case for Greta, if she doesn't really have to be in the classroom, she isn't really on a school strike, is she? Her whole viral movement is based on a lie. Luckily, tomorrow is one of Greta's trademark school strikes. I'm going to go there and ask her questions right to her face. Right now though, I'm gonna go check into my hotel and touch base with my publisher, Ezra, and see what else is on the schedule. Mm -hmm. Now, it's a, uh, a big assignment, but I found a friend in Sweden who we've worked with before. She's an investigative journalist named Annika Rothstein. Now, we've, in the past, she's reported for us from Venezuela in the middle of their uprising, so she's very courageous. If she's willing to stare down Nicolas Maduro, I think that 
that she can uh, stare down the political correctness in Stockholm. But I'm I'm not completely kidding. We've seen pictures of Greta Thunberg and her mum and dad wearing Antifa clothing. Now that could just be, you know, them acting butch, or maybe they really are backed up by those violent street gangs yeah. of the left that that are pretty active in Europe. So be careful. Annika's got a good sense of things. She survived with Duro's thug. She can survive anything Greta has. But I think the number one job for you, Kian, is to ask the questions that the mainstream media won't, and to accept the answers wherever you know wherever the facts may lead. Is Greta really on a school strike, or is that just some fake backstory? Is her entourage a big corporate PR agency, or is she really living the cream? And finally, if you can find out more about her origins as a global superstar, especially this Ingmar uh, Rensog, um, I think those are three big questions that the entirety of the media party has never asked. So it's a big job, but I think you're up for it. So with that, my cameraman and myself packed up and headed to downtown Stockholm to meet up with Annika, a reporter on the ground who knows lots about the Greta Thunberg saga. We started out at the parliamentary campus where Greta Thunberg's school strikes originally began. This is the pedestrian walkway surrounding the Swedish parliament and it is the exact location where Greta Thunberg started staging her alleged school walkouts on August 20th, 2018. It is the exact location where Igmar Reinshog coincidentally, or at least we're supposed to believe, he just happened to walk by Greta Thunberg on the first few minutes of her very first school strike. Igmar Reinshog is a financial investor and public relations specialist who just dropped off his son some few kilometers away for kindergarten on his way to work. Now this location is nowhere near the most likely route of travel and it's kind of hard to believe that he accidentally stepped off of the metro, walked a few kilometers to get here, and then went back to the metro and then went to work. And it was all a coincidence. It was all a happenstance. That's what they want us to believe. I don't buy it. It was right here at this very spot where Greta Inc. was originally founded. It is right here where the entire saga began, the saga to kickstart a global leftist icon. And we're supposed to believe that it was all a coincidence. It was all an accident. Now on the day, August 20th, when Greta was found by Igmar Reinshog, a friendship and business partnership was formed. Very shortly after, Greta was added to an advisory role on Igmar Reinshog's company, the Facebook for Environmentalists, We Don't Have Time. Igmar Reinshog used Greta's image to promote his company and make a boatload of cash. Now, Greta says adamantly that she didn't profit from that, but Igmar, well, he sure did. Now, everybody wants to know what the motivation is behind the people at Greta Inc. and the people pulling the strings. Well, Greta Thunberg's motivation and that of her family was admitted on BBC Radio. Greta Thunberg's father went on BBC and said that her activism is a Xanax of sorts to fix her depression, her selective mutism, and her eating disorders. Listen to him. I mean, I have two daughters, and to be honest, they're all that matters to me. I just want them to be happy. And I can see Greta is very happy from doing this, and I saw where she was before. I mean, she didn't speak to a single person. She could only eat in her own home. And when she went on this school strike, and I think day three, someone came along and gave her a like, pad thai vegan, and she ate it, and that was like, I cannot explain how much that, what a change that meant to her and to us. And it was just like, she changed. And she could do things that she could never have done before. And now, now she's just, like any other you think she's not ordinary now because she's special and she's very famous and all these things but to me she's now an ordinary child she can do all the things like other people can and, and i she's happy she dances around she laughs a lot we have a lot of fun and she's in a very good place now, while this activism is curing Greta Thunberg's depression and mental illness, it's sparking mental illness in youth around the world. Depression has skyrocketed among young people. Many young folks think that the world is ending and life is just not worth living. But I guess that's the price to pay 
for Greta Thunberg's family. So when I was 11, I became ill. I fell into depression. I stopped talking and I stopped eating. In two months, I lost about 10 kilos of weight. Later on, I was diagnosed with Asperger's syndrome, OCD, and selective mutism. Now, it's obvious that Greta Thunberg is going to have her selection of whatever Ivy League university she wants to go to, and she'll be making her fortune in due course. But right now, the people making the money are the folks pulling the strings of Greta Inc. It's the people like Al Gore and the industry behind him, the speaking circuits for these green elites around the world. It's the green lobby, it's the green tech that are making the money, putting Greta up on a pedestal to spark this movement so that they can make the bucks. Would, would you be able to tell me, you're Greta Thunberg Security, who's, who's paying you? No, I don't want to. You don't want to tell the world who's paying you? No, because I don't think the world needs to know who's paying me, so. She demands electric vehicles, she demands that uh, she tr takes a boat across the ocean, <laughs> but her security team can drive a gasoline-powered vehicle? You're a funny guy. No comments. All right, it's time. okay, don't touch me though, thank you. Well. Sure, Greta has pulled the wool over our eyes, or at least Greta Inc. has. The people yeah. behind her have said, uh, have set this up in a way that looks in retrospect, really orchestrated, right. uh, pre-planned out, and there are some people maybe financially benefiting from it even. But people do this kind of thing all the time, these public stunts, it happens all the time. What is the more insidious side of this? Yeah, I would say that, sure, this is a cynical PR plot on the face of it, but what's behind it is, is interesting and, in my mind, a little bit scary. Because we know for a fact that the person who inspired or rather told Greta to start this school strike is the founder of Extinction Rebellion here in Sweden. This is a guy that has very, very clear um, political policies. So he has a strategy. We know that he planned this strategy when he sent out a mass email saying that, oh, we need a youthful face to sort of boost the idea, these methods that we're working on because no one listens to a guy in a suit so we need a cute young face to promote this political environmentalist agenda. He then reaches out to Greta and tells her that, oh, I had my daughter do this school strike a year ago and that worked really well. Why don't you do this? And she does. And he said, if I remember correctly, he said his daughter was inspired it was his daughter who was inspired yeah. by Parkland exactly. students. Yeah, yeah. And Greta has said that she was also inspired by Parkland students. Right. So you can see the line sort of drawing between these two. Yeah. And also on the on the file of Inst Extinction Re Rebellion, mm -hmm. Greta has said she's giving money to them too. Yeah, and she went, a lot of times people will, they will plead, the team behind Greta will just plead ignorance and be like, oh, a lot of people like to associate with her, but she has no opinion either way. In this case, this came directly from her own Twitter account, which they claim she runs on her own, yeah. where she did this musical collaboration. She was wearing an Antifa shirt at the time. I think a lot of people have seen this photo because members of her family also wore these Antifa shirts. And it was because of this musical collaboration she was doing with a musical group that had to do with environmental issues. And I think the the, uh, the issue of privilege is, is one that isn't discussed enough when it comes to Greta. As we know from pictures taken inside her house, they have furniture that, you know, I, someone like me could only dream of owning. And she is extremely, her family is extremely well off, and she does not know true hardship, even with her disabilities. If you claim an adult stage, if you're saying that, okay, I'm going to speak on the world stage about these very, very serious issues, you have to be able to not have it be a monologue, mm -hmm. but a dialogue. Yeah. And I think that she has, has only reached the monologue stage, unfortunately, and it's time to make this conversation about climate a dialogue, where she answers a lot of very difficult questions. And with that, Annika and I walked to the very community where Greta Thunberg says her childhood was ruined. What we saw there, I almost couldn't believe. So this is the community that Greta Thunberg actually was raised in. This is where her childhood took place. She might have actually played in this exact sandbox. Now, I don't want to show you her exact house because I know what everyone will say, but you can get a taste of the community that she lives in. Come check this out. Look at these buildings. It is almost like a storybook. It's like a children's book. The colors, the 
tranquility here. This is where every child in the world would love to grow up. This is the childhood that Greta supposedly never had. Dude, I'm not aggressive we to you. We are secure to it, and you are dangerous for us. So get no, the I'm not. Fuck Leave off. me alone. Leave me alone. This late in the winter, days don't last too long in Stockholm, so we packed up our stuff and headed back to our hotel, getting ready for Greta's 72nd school strike. So I'm here standing outside of Greta Thunberg's uh, alleged school strike, right outside of the Swedish parliament here today on January 3rd. There's not a large crowd, but there certainly is a media gaggle. And what I find interesting is there's actually a large security presence that looks like private security right now. Who is paying for them? Greta Thunberg says she doesn't take money from anyone. Her parents pay for uh, everything she needs, apparently. At least that's what we've been told. Her parents are paying for three security guards here on her school strike. I find that hard to believe. Let's go see what we can find out. It turned out there were far more security personnel than we first thought. There were three very close to her, but there were far more spread around inconspicuously around the block. I approached a few of them to figure out who they were and what they were doing. So what was the breakdown? Who was paying them? Here's what they said. Hey guys, how are you? Are you guys security for Greta Thunberg? Mm, yes. Who's paying for you? Uh, I don't want to do any comments on this. Do you come to every strike no, that she's on? I don't comment. No comments. You have three security guards here for a small strike over there. What do you expect to happen? And I, I'm really curious to know who's paying for you and your equipment, your travel, your car here. I'm sorry, I don't comment anything. I'm sorry. Is Greta Thunberg angry at all that you use a gasoline-powered car? No comments, yes. No comments. Okay. Has she asked you to use an electric vehicle at all? No comments, okay. Why is that? Like, these are pretty simple questions. No comments. Greta Thunberg is an international presence and your security team has but, gone virtually unnoticed. You have, you have to understand that we cannot give you any comments. No, I can. I, and I can ask some pretty simple questions. I'm a reporter, I came across... Uh, I can't answer. I can't answer. Has, just the one question then. Has Greta asked you to use an electric vehicle? <laughs> Do you think it's weird that you are acting as security for Greta, but uh, she demands electric vehicles, she demands that uh, she tr takes a boat across the ocean, <laughs> but her security team can drive a gasoline-powered vehicle? You're a funny guy. No comments. All Maybe right, next it's time. okay, don't touch me though. Thank you. Well, Excuse me. How are you? Sorry? How are you? I'm fine. It's sir. a little cold, hey? Would, would you be able to tell me, you're Greta Thunberg Security, who's, who's paying you? No, I don't want to. You don't want to tell the world who's paying you? No, because I don't think the world needs to know who's paying me, so... Is Greta Thunberg paying you personally? Come on, I don't want to answer your questions. How about you, sir? Who's paying you? <laughs> why don't you stop? Stop what? Asking questions? Please, yes. Why, why would you want me to do that? No comments. Interesting. No, you won't tell me. Is Greta Thunberg paying you, paying you personally, or? I like the jacket, Arcteryx. Nice. It's an expensive brand. Yeah. How many would you say? Five, six? Seven? Are you from Sweden yourselves? Yeah. yeah. Do you follow her wherever she goes? Did you come to Canada when she was manipulating our general election? No. Do you work for Parliament? I don't want to answer your question, so... The world wants answers. Okay. Do you think they deserve to know who's paying for Greta Thunberg's trips across the ocean, her hotels, her security, her platforms, her audiovisual equipments. Nah, no. I don't think so. No. Do you believe in her cause? In? Her cause. Uh, it's her cause. But you just get paid to protect her so it doesn't really matter. Alright, I respect that. So fine, Greta Thunberg has major security here. Who's paying them? 
still not totally clear on that. Why are they undercover and trying to act all James Bondy? Also don't know the answer to that. What I do want to know though, is why are certain people allowed to go to Greta and ask questions? And how do these security guards know exactly who we are already? Uh, and wouldn't let us come near them at all. Why are some people allowed to ask questions? People who are in favor of Greta's campaign. Why are they allowed to ask questions and get close? And why are people who are critical of Greta not allowed to be anywhere near the action? It seems like they don't want tough questions being asked because they know if someone starts to pull that one thread, perhaps the thread that Greta Thunberg's school strike was never really a school strike, then it will all come collapsing down. Greta, would you be able to tell me hey, hey. what school are, are you, you actually are you striking from? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Show me a press card. Yes. So when you actually started your school strike, were you leaving the classroom or did you have a day off from your school that you were at? You, you, you know that the school that you go to, you have multiple days off a week. You don't actually have to go to class nine to five. Did you walk valiantly from the classroom like you've led the world to believe? Or did you just have days off on Friday? Nice to meet you again. I remember you from uh, Edmonton. Yes. I yeah. remember your Tesla. It was full of plastic. Oh, it was not my Tesla. I shared it with many others. You're just uh, messing around. No, Come I'm, I'm, tr I'm no. trying to ask her questions. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, don't touch Listen. me. Don't touch me. Oh, this is a free country. No, this is no, a free no, country. No. Yeah, but you're behaving. I'm behaving yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, behaving yeah, fine. Yeah, I know. Who are you? Who's oh, paying you? Uh, who's paying me? Yes. Uh, who, why, why do you wonder? Do you have a press ID? Yes. Yeah, show me that. Who are you? Who Show are you? Show me your ID. Huh. Who told you you could be a oh, rent-a-cop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't touch me. Shit. Oh, don't touch you. Yeah, but I'm a... Uh, it's a free country. I'm standing here, right? Okay, yeah, continue yeah. to do that. Yeah, yeah. Take don't, it easy. Take, take it easy. Now, I had been banging my head against the wall trying to get past the security guards, so I decided that maybe Annika would have a better shot at asking Greta some different questions. I handed Annika my equipment and she was able to sneak past Greta's security and ask some questions. Unfortunately, Greta didn't seem all too interested in answering when she said that she was with Canadian media. Greta repeatedly said in Swedish that she didn't want to answer any questions and she couldn't be forced to conduct an interview. The questions were very simple and all we wanted to know is if Greta Thunberg and her family had ever contacted Igmar Reinshog before the fateful day on August 20th, 2018 when he coincidentally walked across her. The very first day of your protest, did Reinshog accidentally run into you? Was it an accident or was it orchestrated by your parents well beforehand? I can understand why people are concerned that the premise of your school strike was never actually the innocent thing that it was. You never were actually leaving a classroom, were you? When the public relations specialist just chanced upon you, was it set up, Greta? Greta, when you were sitting on the train, when they took a photo of you sitting on the ground, how scripted was that? Was it pre-planned? Did you know that there was going to be the blowback from the German train authority pointing out that you were actually in first class? Hey, what are you doing? Don't touch me. Who do you think you are? Don't. No, we're serious. I don't care. Get the fuck off. Who do you think you are? I'm asking questions. Yes. I want to ask Greta some questions. Yeah. Don't touch me. Yeah, yeah. What do you think people are going to say when it gets I out that oh. a security guard from Sweden punched a reporter three yeah, times yeah. in the gut? Uh, yeah. Sure. I don't care. You don't care? No. You know, this is communist country. We're glad don't you... Oh, don't touch me. They're pushing. Hey. Just yeah, larger, cool. larger frame, wide angle of this guy being uh, an asshole. Yeah. 
My feet are planted here. Oh, they're If planted, you touch yeah. me, oh. I'll be reporting you to your superior. Yeah, yeah, sure. What are you doing here? Are you from Hong what Kong? What are you doing here? What do you mean, what am I doing what? here? I'm yeah. a reporter. I'm asking questions. Uh, uh, now I'm focused reporter. on you instead of uh, Greta, who I should be focused off. on. Fuck off. Don't get so close. Don't touch me. I'm not touching you. Touch I haven't moved. You're standing on I my foot. Once. I haven't moved once. Hey. Who? What are you doing? Dude, I'm not aggressive we to you. We are secure, dude. And you are dangerous for us. So get no, the I'm not. fuck Leave off. me alone. Leave me alone. Stop. I'm allowed to do this. Where are we? Hong Kong? China? No, this is Sweden. Do Sweden. you have ID? Do you have ID? Yeah, I do, and I'll show it to you. Thank you. Dude. No. Fuck off. Are you here illegal? I think so. Yeah? You're done with this, man. No, I'm not. I don't think I am. So fucking behave you. Huh? Behave you. Behave me? I will. Believe me. We wanted to ask some questions and prove that she wouldn't be able to answer them. Your hands on me wasn't a part of this. You didn't need to be a part of this. You could have left me alone. It turned out fine, didn't it? You could have left me alone. You didn't. And it's going to blow back on you. We asked the questions of Greta. She turned her back on me in the last pitch. She answered a few at the start. She answers a few of Annika's a little bit by saying, I don't have to partake in this. But at the end, the security guards here violently shoved me. Two of them did. One off camera, one blatantly on camera. And then he had the gall to come up to me and ask if I was here legally. Like he was joking, like he was going to arrest me because I was here illegally. That's funny, coming in Sweden, where bombings and rapes are happening every single day here because of the people that they have no idea who are in their country and frankly don't even care. But when it comes to asking Greta Thunberg questions, St. Greta, well, they're going to shove you, they're going to push you, they're going to threaten you, they're going to intimidate you. I hope that this was enlightening. That Greta Thunberg's school strike was never what we were led to believe. She goes to a school where she's allowed to leave. She's not striking from the classroom valiantly, taking a battalion of students with her and striking at the Swedish parliament, no. She has days off when she's feeling a little uncomfortable or ill or just doesn't want to go to class. It's not a strike in any sense of the word. Where is her money coming from? Is it coming from Reinshog still? They had a bit of a falling out. We're not sure what happened there, but we're not sure who's paying these security guards. We're not sure who's paying for her captain of the boat to fly from the United Kingdom to the United States to ship her back over the sea. We don't know where the money's coming from and we need to get to the bottom of it. More work needs to be done to expose Greta Thunberg. We still don't know who is paying for Greta's elite international security or her domestic security for that matter that eclipsed her protest numbers earlier this morning. If you want to contribute to our research and to the work that we're doing exposing Greta Incorporated, please go to GretaInc.com. If you can pitch in a few bucks to help us with our hotel, our flights here from Canada, it would go a long ways to making sure that we can continue to uncover the secrets that Greta's handlers don't want you to find out. Thank you so much for watching in Stockholm, Sweden. For Rebel News, I'm Kian Bexty.